that they raised up a people exactly in their image. And that image came from God. And the image was completely shattered by the induction of animalism into the human race. I know that people, they despise and thoroughly hate the, the, the doctrine of, of serpent seed. It's very strange, but the Jews have believed it all their lives. And anybody reading the 8th chapter of John can't figure that out. He is just a little bit sick when it comes to spiritual things. <clears throat> See? Now, he say, they said, we be not born of fornication, we're children of Abraham. I'll tell you one thing, Abraham did not fornicate. He had an absolute wife whose name was Sarah. But I'm going to tell you one thing, Abraham was not God. And, and when you can trace your lineage back to Abraham, you can go plumb back to God. Because that is the place that you watch. If the Jews could ever get to Abraham, they knew by scripture that Abraham was an absolute child of Almighty God. They knew those things. <clears throat> they went right back to Adam because Adam was the son of God. But he wasn't the son of God the way Jesus was the son of God. Adam was the son of God a great deal like you and I are sons of God. But even Adam is the head of our race, speaking humanly, because he is the head of of our race. <clears throat> now let's go into um, and see the, the, the end of the children of God, the sons of God, and we go to Revelation. Of course, we read it before. And in Revelation 21, we read in 1 to 3, and it said, There I saw a new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. They were dissolved and reconditioned, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God at heaven, prepared as a bride nor her husband. And I heard a great voice in heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And then in verse 9, there came unto me one of the angels, seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked to me, saying, Come hither, I'll show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending proud of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and <clears throat> the light. Her light was like on a stone, most precious, even like a jasper, and so on. This is a new Jerusalem. And you can see then that God, that God demanded of himself that he create a species. <clears throat> and that species was a God species. And you will find, as Brother Brandon said categorically, the seed holds true. Now, if you can hybridize it. You can do a lot of things for the same as Darwin found out. You can take and make white pigeons and this kind of pigeon, that pigeon, all goes back to your gray slate pigeon. <clears throat> you can do what you want. You can take a rose. You can make a beautiful job out of it. It'll go right back to where it was. There's always a species hold true genetically. Now, what, they, what they're trying to do is begin to change species by splicing. And then this is right where the scripture says they're going to attempt to mingle the seed. You get to this place, you've already got it in nature where they're doing it. Back in the Garden of Eden, they had a person, uh, a certain individual. Well, it, it was a beast, <clears throat> a great big giant. He was, he was ebony-colored, as Brother Brandon said. Nothing to do with the black race today at all, not a thing to do with it. <clears throat> but he, uh, he, he had a, a very sharp mentality. He could talk, he could reason. And uh, evidently, he was what God put there in the garden for Adam. That Adam could say, you do this and you do that, you do the other thing. And he was like a slave. Now what they're trying to do today is they're trying to cross the chimpanzee or something with man, splice the genes, and they're wondering if it's morally ethical for them to bring forth a beast of burden for the people. So you're right back to the Garden of Eden. Or the fall took place. <clears throat> but God desired to have a species. And the mingling of the seed where the sons of God married the daughters of men because they're beautiful, voluptuous women and they had more interest in sex than they had in God and so the God for God destroyed them. Now you're looking at a picture here where God wanted a God race. A race to come out of him. <clears throat> All right. We're going to look at the board and to do so, we're going to go back to... Uh, A page over here, page 14, and I'll just read 68. Now, the difference between him and you as a son. That's what he said. The difference between you and him as a son. See, he was at the beginning, the word, and on morph a body. He came and lived in that in the person of Melchizedek. <clears throat> Now, we got to watch our language here. This is why I say that Brother Brandon can throw us for a loop the way he talks. 
Now he said Jesus and God are identical except one had a beginning. <clears throat> then he said Jesus was God, but he wasn't God. Many times you can't tell if he's referring to the incarnate Jesus and since the one that was born is just what he's referring to. But he categorically says that Melchizedek was God manifested. See? Now the difference between him and you is a son. See, he was at the beginning of the word, a non morpho body. He came and lived in that person, lived in that per lived in that and the person of Melchizedek. <clears throat> So you got what seemed like a conundrum. My understanding here, as I've taught already, is the fact that God, or out of God, issued forth the Son, Christ, the anointing, Logos. Call it what you want. Purifier can all be identified. It's a form that God took and indwelt it. So all right, he came and lived in that person, in the, lived in that one, in the person of Melchizedek. Then later, we never heard any more of Melchizedek because he became Jesus Christ. Now, you're running an awful close picture here. <clears throat> so let's keep reading. Melchizedek was a priest, but he became Jesus. Now, you bypass that. Now, that's what we're looking at. Let's, we'll go back to this later on. But the thing we're looking at is you bypass that because in that form, Jesus knew all things. And he did because he tells us that in John 17, praying to God. And you have never been able to know that yet. You came like Adam, like me. You became from the attribute to the flesh to be tempted. You came, you, you bypassed the attribute body that could not be tempted. You bypassed the word body that could not be tempted. You came to the flesh to be tempted. Put them all together as a phrase with hyphens. <clears throat> Punctuate with little dashes. T-H-E dash F-L-E-S H dash T-O dash B-E dash T-E-M-P-T-D the flesh to be tempted body. See, not the body that could disappear and appear, but the flesh to be tempted body. That's what you came to. That's where we go. That is, now he's telling you, where we go from we die is to the body that we never got. It's waiting for us. That's where we go. That is the word. Then we can look back and see what we did. Now we don't understand it. We have never been the word. We've just become flesh men, not the word. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham could be saying in here that we had a consciousness in God, which it certainly would do. As he suggested, all the sons of God came together and appeared before the Lord, and Satan appeared also. That is not quite a suggestion. It seemed like a remark that was an actual statement. <clears throat> but he's saying you don't have any recollection of that because... You had no form whereby you could keep that recollection with you and utilize it. But now, when you go back, you have no problem apprehending everything that you knew at that time in God. Now, we are not talking about the Elohim of God, which I think the Mormons endorse, which is mean there's a plethora of gods. God is made up of a multitude of gods, and we are gods. That is not true. We are sons of God. We are not gods. <clears throat> you could be called demigods, or you could say, I am, we are gods in the sense <clears throat> of a generic race. <clears throat> we had our beginnings and our genesis in God. And that is the life. And that's what was redeemed there. So, okay, <clears throat> let's see if we can do something about the board. I don't know. So, let us examine the Christ and his manifested form as set forth by Brother Branham. And we're going to try to draw a little bit on the board. I don't, as I say, if I'm going to be very successful in anything or not, because I'm not very, <clears throat> very adept. I think my green one is shot, isn't it? <clears throat> How have I got any blue left? Yes. We could, we could take the blue here then. All right, we go back then to the very beginning where there is God. Uh, and he is alone in all of his... Godhood and his greatness. <clears throat> and we know that God absolutely is constituted.